So, this is Alan from the future. Um, the first few minutes, I forgot to hit the record button on the video. I have the audio, but there's probably about five minutes or so that there's just no video for it. So, I apologize for that. But it will start eventually, and you can probably see the panic in my eyes when I'm trying to decide. Should I tell Andy that I didn't record that? Should we try to start over? Or should I just let it go? I decided to just let it go. I think it's better off just having a more natural conversation. Andy Malafarina. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Andy Malafarina. And Alan, I seen that. So Andy, you have a podcast, The Dope Show, right? Yeah. How long you yep. been? How long you been doing The Dope Show? Um. I'm not sure. I think I've been doing the dope show because I've been podcasting since like my sophomore year in college. Okay, and that was pro that was probably like seven eight years ago. And but I think because I was doing a podcast for a while where I because I was just like figuring it out, figuring out what I was gonna do, and I was doing a podcast for a while called Hear Andy Talk, and then I transitioned into just talking about hip hop, and that got exhausting real quick. But that's where the <laughs> dope show came from. Gotcha. Uh, no, <laughs> I love hip hop to death, but if you keep up to it, like all the inner workings of it really intently on a day to day basis, it is exhausting. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I mean, but, that's uh, with anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. You, you get you get too deep into it. You start hating it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I was <laughs> noticing with that. But um, but the actual question you asked me, I think this iteration of the dope show, I think I've been doing it for like two, three years, maybe. I honestly don't pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> You also do you so is the dope show all on Twitch and then you cut it up for YouTube? Is that generally how you do it? Hey, wait, can you um can you ask that again and cut out? Yeah, the dope show you record on Twitch live and then you cut it up for YouTube and then your podcast feeds, right? Yeah, well, I I was doing it um I was just doing it um at home, recording it at home, and then posting it on iTunes. And I've I always knew about Twitch. Uh, but I thought it was just for video games. And I'm also like, I'm not good at video games like yeah. at all. That's what I make sure <laughs> I tell everyone on my Twitch stream. I'm not good at video games whatsoever, but I will I will try my darndest to entertain you in any way possible. Um, but yeah, I I, um, I normally just did the podcast by on its own on iTunes. And then I, I discovered Twitch is way more multifaceted than I ever mm -hmm. thought it was. Yeah. And yeah, I've been... Um, like I do, I do, uh, I, I try to, sometimes I, sometimes I, uh, can I curse on this? Oh yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. Sometimes I fuck up and I like, you know, I, I, I'm not good. I, I don't, I don't have like insomnia. I just, some nights I can't sleep for the life of me and I have a full, I have work. So it's just hard to get up at like 7am to play video games when you haven't gotten to sleep till like 4am. But normally, normally I'm twitching every Monday through Friday in the morning. Uh, often I'll, I'll try to get on during the weekends, but yeah, basically I, um, I just throw my podcast in there, uh, on the days, you know, and I have, a, I have a schedule I try to keep to, but yeah, I, I podcast, uh, I, I incorporated my podcast into my Twitch stream uh, and then the rest of the time I'm playing video games and, and watching, uh, SummerSlam and other WWE pay-per-views. <laughs> yeah. how, so how can people find you on Twitch? Oh, uh, if you just go to twitch.tv slash Andy got jokes and pretty much Andy got jokes on all social at this point, because I, I had a bunch of different like social media tags. But then now that I'm getting more serious about all this stuff and trying to get more people on the bandwagon and shit, it's a very small wagon. There's plenty of room. Um, but uh, <laughs> or I should say it's not a it's it's a large wagon. There's just not enough people on it. So trust me, you, you're going to get a good seat. You uh, get on that fucking wagon. You um, stretch out. But Yeah, no, I'm pretty much an yeah, there's there's room to lay down. I mean, it's not the most comfortable wagon, but if 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 you're a hobo, you could probably find time to sleep on it. I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm pretty much Andy got jokes on all social, or you could just search the Dope Show podcast, and that'll take you to all the other social. And uh, yeah, I update things constantly. So if you want to get obsessed with me, I I make it very accessible to do so. <laughs> nice. So you were streaming. Uh, probably what two weeks ago, I think, and you're talking about wrestling and how how much you like it, right? You're a pretty big wrestling fan. Yeah, and the irony of it is, I'm like, 
I don't even have because a lot of people love wrestling and then people like justifiably make fun of them for it. And then they'll be like, well, I, I liked it when I was a kid. I'm like, nope, not me. I don't have that argument. I got hardcore into wrestling at 26. <laughs> OK, like, what, well, what got you? into Yeah. It? Uh, kind of my, uh, well, now my wife, she was my fiance at the time. Well, started out girlfriend. Cause I think we, I think she was my girl. Yeah. Cause I got her, <laughs> we started dating when I was, uh, like 23 or something for our first anniversary. I got her the WWE network and, um, it like, wasn't the you only bought her the whole a lot company? of people listening are like, yeah, yeah. I had an extra I had an extra <laughs> billion and a half laying around and I said, Vince, don't worry, I got this. Um yeah, you guys you guys like SummerSlam, that was me. Uh no, I got her I got her the uh, the just the network to watch. And a lot of people are like, That's ten dollars a month. That's not a good uh anniversary gift. I got her other things. I can't remember what I got her. But yeah, it kind of started there because she was a big wrestling fan in high school okay. and we started I think we checked out a pay per view or something um and then we were kind of watching it a little bit here and there and then i think after like yeah around when i started turning 26 she start like we would run out of things to watch on the weekends and shit because me and her are real good at just like you know i'll get a case of beer she'll get a bottle of wine and we'll just fucking not leave the house because uh it, i don't know we, we we like each other and that that kind of ends there um <laughs> but uh but yeah, no, like around when I was like, cause I'm 28 now I turned 28 in March. So okay. I'm like halfway to 29, but, um, yeah, around 26 or so we just started watching pay-per-views more often. Like we would Google like the best matches and then watch those pay-per-views and like the matches would be dope. And then we would just end up finishing the whole pay-per-view. And then over time I just started getting into it way more. Like there was something about wrestling that just connected to me. Like, and, and this is going to sound super douchey, but like the art form, the yeah. quote unquote art form that it is, it was just something. Cause I, I do stand up comedy and there's like a lot. I noticed a lot of parallels between the live performance of wrestling wrestling and like the live performance of stand-up comedy you know what i mean so it, yeah. it, it definitely it intrigued the fuck out of me so i just i, I just got hooked man it's it, it's just fun it, like like the thing it's it's actually similar to comedy for me because like when i do comedy there's a lot of shit there's a lot of shit you got to deal with but it's one of those things man when it's good it is fucking good and that's the thing with wrestling there's not as much shit you know from a viewing standpoint it's it's a lot better than it is bad but like when it's good it's fuck like it like on the on the last pay-per-view they had this one character who's like been a, a good guy or uh, as they refer to it in wrestling a baby face this one character becky lynch and she sort of turned to a bad guy or turned heel if you're not familiar with the yeah, terminology yeah. she turned she turned heel and i'm one i know it's not fucking real <laughs> and, but like when she when she turned heel as a 28 year old man, I fucking jumped out of my seat and I went, <laughs> Holy shit. It's like, dude, there's something about it that gets you. Yeah. I, I was, but it's like the same thing. That I was in your stream when that happened. I think you got oh, yeah, super you, you excited were. about it. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, it's like you, you make fun of wrestling fans cause they pop hard and every, everyone's argument is like, it's not real. And it's like, yeah, well, I don't know. I saw a bunch of people on Twitter, when uh if i don't know if you watch the walking dead but yeah. like spoiler alert it's it's not a big spoiler if you haven't watched it yet uh it's just like a bummer that happens in one of the episodes yeah. but there's this character called the king and in one of the episodes the zombies or the walkers or whatever you want to call them they he has this pet lion and they kill his lion yeah. and like i went on twitter after that and everyone was going fucking crazy like <laughs> how could you kill this lion and i'm like oh i'm an asshole because i popped hard because the good guy's now a bad guy but you you're fucking crying over a cgi lion but that that doesn't make you a loser but it's like we're all losers yeah, yeah. we just we're all losers in a different like ways you, everything all of us like dumb shit yeah it's just the people that don't acknowledge it's my problem with like comic book fans you know what i mean like i love comic books don't get me wrong but there's a lot of comic book shit out there it's kind of dumb yeah. you know what i mean oh yeah it's the same it's the same it's the same way as I'm an adult man and I'm watching these dudes with like in their fucking underwear pretend fight each other. It's like you're also an adult man and you're what you're you're watching cartoons where guys in spandex fucking save the world from meteors and horror. It's like it's all dumb. Yeah, no, just, for sure. I, I I I acknowledge wrestling's dumb. You fucking comic book fans and all you other nerds <laughs> don't, and you need to step up. <laughs> own your own your shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. The uh, the 
I get like so I, I'm not a huge wrestling fan anymore. I kind of have a weird relationship with it. Uh, growing yeah. up, when I was a kid, I liked it because my cousin was really into it, so I'd like watch it with him. And every once in a while, yo, wait, so, side question: Did yep. you think it was real when I was a kid? Okay, because I no, yeah. I, I don't think I ever really. I mean, when I was like real little, and I didn't know, you know, I mean, if I yeah. thought cartoons and stuff were real too, it was probably. But once I had no, like, I thought I what reasoning i was i was pretty confident it was never real <laughs> i remember being a little little kid and like i thought it was real like i remember the un- like whenever the undertaker came out like i watched it a tiny bit when i was a little kid but i never got super inf- but i do rem- i watched it enough to remember that when the undertaker came out i legitimately got scared i was like i hope he doesn't come <laughs> around here and i remember i fucking this one kid who was in my um i forget what grade it was probably older than i should have been to realize this shit but I remember this one kid in my class was talking about how his like dad writes for WWE, and I was like, "What? What? What? What would he have to write?" Oh yeah, there's nothing. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing to write, and that that completely like shattered my world. Yeah. I was like, "It's not real." <laughs> but I was I was hope hopefully I was really young when that happened. I can't remember though. Yeah, I was I was probably like eight or nine when I watched wrestling, and that was around when like The Rock and Stone Cold and Mankind and all those mm-hmm. guys were in it. And that was right around the time that was so the reason why Vince came out and said that wrestling is fake. I don't know if you ever heard this story or not, but he came out and in front of uh, Congress, I believe, was like, no, this is all sports entertainment. This is fake was because they wanted to tax them for being a yeah. a fighting sport. Yeah. And he was like, nope, we're I heard doing, about we're killing kayfabe here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that on. Um, there's a great wrestling podcast with uh, called Something to Wrestle With. Is okay. with uh, Bruce Pr- Bruce Pritchard. I forget what he would consider his job title, but he was essentially for like years, for years up until like, like the mid 2000s, like or not mid 2000s, but um, because we're still in the early 2000s, but um, like the the like 2005. I don't know when he like yeah, yeah. Worked, like when he stopped working for when he got fired the first time. But yeah, he was like Vince's right hand man, and he was talking about that for um, no, like they would uh, like the the local athletic commissions would tax would like do taxes upon taxes yeah. because they're like, well, if this is a this is a competitive event, you know that means we're allowed to fucking tax you for this horse shit. And yeah. Vince was like, fuck out of here! I'm not giving you more money than you like more money you think you deserve. Well, not you know what I mean? not only taxing them, but also testing them. It would have had to go through the commission similar to the UFC or to boxing or to all these competitive uh, sports. And none of those guys would pass. Maybe maybe CM Punk for about five minutes, but everyone else he would get popped. <laughs> you know, everyone else would get uh, yeah, in yeah. trouble. Um, yeah, dude. But yeah, so I, I was never a huge fan. I was into it when I was a kid and I f- kind of fell out. But as I got older, I got, I really enjoy the behind the scenes stuff. Like that to me is fascinating. Watching wrestling is like is difficult for me. It's like really boring to watch, <laughs> but I love hearing the behind the scenes stories and how they work everything out and just kind of their yeah. their own personal journey as wrestlers through it. And that that I find fascinating. No, I feel I feel you on that. And that that's actually what I I don't know if this is just going to turn into a promo for something to wrestle with, but that's another great part is like, you know, Bruce Pritchard just gives you all the behind the scenes shit. Yeah. And like, you know, all the little that's... stuff, all the little all the all the little stuff that's like, you know, like what the fuck? Like there there'll be stuff on there where like the the guy in it, Conrad Thompson, I think his name is. I forget his. I forget his actual. It's Conrad something. Um, but uh, like he'll ask him these questions, like, "Oh, you did this in the storyline," and then magically the guy who was on top. Like I, I was actually listening to the one today. They were talking about the uh, '97 SummerSlam, and I forget which wrestler it was, but there was this one wrestler who was on top. He was like main eventing pay per views. He like he main evented WrestleMania, and then six months later he like was just not on WWE anymore. And he was like, what the hell happened to him? And Bruce Pritchard was like, Oh, he got hurt. And then just stopped calling us. <laughs> so we didn't know. Yeah. Like we didn't, we tried, we tried to keep up. We tried to stay updated with him and see if he was good or not. And he just stopped returning our calls. So, you know, you know, 
is a bad working relationship so they let him go until he decided to like get his shit together yeah and you're like oh that's interesting that that does add more context to why the storyline just will randomly change for no reason oh yeah no they i mean they there's so many storylines that just die because of uh working relationships they just like, yeah, yeah whatever that's fine like and well, that's like enzo 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 Amore got in trouble because he got the uh, like the sexual assault allegation. Oh yeah, um, which I think ended up not being true. I don't don't quote me on that. I, I didn't I look no into idea. it enough. Uh, yeah, I have no clue. Um, but uh, no, yeah, he just wasn't on WWE anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's just <laughs> yeah, not yeah. there. They yeah. do that shit with um, and more more understandably like with uh. Me and my girl were actually debating this, how like you can't you can't search for Chris Benoit on uh, the WWE network. Oh yeah. They still have his they still have his matches, mm-hmm. but you can't in the WWE search bar, you can't actually search for Chris Benoit. And there's like part because it's like if you if if you know the story, like I think there's really I my personal opinion about the whole Chris Benoit thing, like a lot of people look at that like he's just like evil and all that shit yeah um and i say i you know i he killed his wife and then himself right that's what and his son oh and his son okay yeah 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 but like i i remember my girl was listening to uh chris jericho has his own podcast and he actually interviewed chris benoit's sister on it and she was saying some shit about how like apparently even i don't like i don't know how she found out about this uh, there's a there's gonna be a lot of holes in my story full disclosure <laughs> um but uh <laughs> no i remember them saying something like he he like he what the fuck oh yeah he um he fed his son like a sleeping pill or like a pain pill before he killed him so like his son wouldn't feel pain yeah. and you're just like that's not what an like that's what a like he killed his son so he's you know his brain was fucked up he was yeah, crazy, yeah. no doubt but if he's evil now i i know i'm you know walking a tightrope with the definition of evil yeah but you're like if he's even if he just did it to be evil why is he giving his son like a pain pill or some shit like you know what i mean yeah so it's like i just think with the, i think with the chris benoit thing it's why it's why i don't feel as guilty watching his matches mm. um is because it's clearly like some cte shit you know what i mean it's like yeah. that you, you get hit in the head too many times the wrong way your brain because i think i think he was like he wasn't crazy old, but he had like the brain of an 80 year old man and all the kind of shit where you're just like, oh, yeah, that's not the dude he was before he got hit in the head all those times. Yeah. Yeah. No, that story's messed yeah, up, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it it's sucks. fucked up to think about. But, um, but yeah. So, yeah, so <laughs> if I can just make everything a bummer by reminding <laughs> you of Chris Benoit. <laughs> um, Sorry about that. No, it's all good. Um, <laughs> what what we are talking about today not not so much uh murder suicide that's not the, <laughs> quite the topic but uh ready to rumble 2000 uh david arquette and scott Cohn. did you see this movie when it came out originally i did i remember um yeah i don't know i i i, I remember watch because i think i i remember um I remember liking it when I was a kid because I would, well, if, if it was 2000, that means I would have been, uh, I would have been 10. Yeah. So, like, and it, 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 it brought me back, uh, watching it, rewatching it again because all the humor in it is just, it's perfect for like a fucking 10 year old. And yeah. it reminded me why I, why I liked it so much. But I give them credit because it's not like, like the movie's dumb, no yes, doubt, but sure. it's like, it's not but it's like dumb on purpose like the it's like a calculated kind of dumb the way that like like dumb and dumber would be where it's like well obviously they made that movie dumb on purpose but it's still like i don't know it's not i a, think uh, ready to rumble is not what i think uh i don't know if i would compare it to dumb and dumber i think everyone didn't care and so it feels intentionally dumb because they're just screwing around the whole time. Like David Arquette was just, I, I just a mess. I mean, I'm pretty sure he was on drugs at this time, right? Didn't he have to sober up? I don't remember super clear. No, I don't know. Um. Oh yeah, he he did go into rehab or something like that. I don't yeah, remember. I don't remember well enough. But uh, yeah, I think like I think the intentional dumb parts was more people were just like. 
who who's gonna watch this movie who cares let's just do whatever we want to do <laughs> instead of the writing well, being intentionally dumb what like with dumb and dumber when, it yeah, was yeah, set yeah. out to be that way yeah, yeah. Like when I compare it to Dumb and Dumber, I'm not trying to say um, quality. I'm not yeah, trying to say that. like, oh, it's on, it's, it's on a level of Dumb and Dumber. Just yeah. to anyone listening, to make that clear, I'm not <laughs> trying to be like, there's Dumb and Dumber, and Ready to Rumble, <laughs> then Stripes, and that's how comedy <laughs> movies are ranked uh, for me. Uh, yeah. No, I'm just saying, like, because yeah, and also too, I th- what I, there was a lot of subtle jokes that I kind of really appreciated in this, like the scene where. They're sitting on the back of their septic truck, their uh, poop truck, yeah. and they're just sitting there eating, talking, and then there's just poop dripping out of the pipe in between them for nothing yeah. other than to establish like, oh, these guys are just gross. Like they don't they even- just don't give a shit. Yeah, they don't care. And like, there's like little moments like that that seem like, oh, it seemed like somebody was trying to be a little nuanced, but the- I was really annoyed by David Arquette in this movie. He drove me crazy. <laughs> well, David Arquette's definitely like you got you, you definitely love him or hate him. Yeah. He's he's an acquired taste. He's he felt like he was um, trying to no, be Tom it, Green. Yeah, maybe. I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah. I I, I could see that definitely. Like he was just trying to be but I think also too, like knowing wrestling fans, mm-hmm. he definitely he definitely did a good job at sort of uh, encompassing a, or becoming like an over the top, way too serious about it wrestling fan. Yeah, because that was the uh, that was the element of the movie I actually kind of liked with the, you know, sort of understanding wrestling more and everything now. Yeah, I just thought it, it, it's like I don't know if it was intentional or not, but going along with the fact that it was just over the top and stupid, but still like felt intentional yeah you know what i'm saying uh-huh. like it wasn't like it wasn't one of those movies like you're gonna watch it but you're gonna watch it ironically i mean some people probably watch ready to rumble ironically but it's like the the uh the 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 jokes that the funny shit that they were going for the jokes that they were going for although incredibly stupid yeah. they felt very intentional oh yeah and that's kind of like a thing that's kind of like a thing with uh that that I feel like correlates to wrestling where you're like like I was saying before you're like this is all dumb but it's also taken seriously. It's like that it's that juxtaposition of those two things. And I thought uh whether it was intentional or not, Ready to Rumble uh I felt like encompassed that very well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what do you want to break down the plot of the movie? Sure. Um well, ba- it's David Arquette and his buddy. I can't remember who the guy was that played his friend because he just looked like generic, like late '90s, early 2000s, like comedy guy. Yeah, it's Scott um, Con. Scott C A A N. Okay. Yeah, dude, it's just that guy that after like 2006, there were all those dudes who were like big, like Freddie Prince Jr. and shit. Yeah, and then once like the late 2000. Like once once it started getting closer to 2010, these guys just like disappeared. They yeah. just don't do shit anymore. He was um, uh, Scott Can was in uh, Ocean's Eleven, Twelve, and Thirteen. He was one of the brothers. He was. Oh yeah, he was. I remember him now. Um, but yeah, the plot. I guess uh, the plot was basically like uh, David Arquette, Scott Can. They uh, they 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 work with that septic company. They're huge wrestling fans. They. Um, their favorite wrestlers, this dude, the King, and WCW's doing like a house show that night. Oh, and that was a that reminds me of another line. So at the so they go to the house show. They're like loving it, having a great time. Um, oh, there's a whole thing. There's a whole so, like like B plot where his dad like it's that whole thing where it's like his dad wants him <laughs> to study and be a cop, but yeah. he wants to just be a wrestler and all that. Um, but uh, yeah, so they go to uh, they go to the WCW live show. King goes up. The big thing is the King's never lost, and um, I forget the actor's name, but he's basically playing like the Eric Bischoff of the yeah of the production. Um, Pantalone. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Is it Jimmy? I I know it's Pantalone, but um, that dude has the perfect Joe. like. That that dude has like the perfect '90s, early 2000s like bad guy vibe and look to him. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Did you ever see Memento? Yeah, so he was he was in that. He was. I saw that a while ago. I for, I forget it. 
Huh. Um, <laughs> I didn't even do that on purpose. That's how <laughs> funny I am. Um, but uh, <laughs> um, oh yeah. So they go to the show. The dude wants the king out, so they like sabotage his shit. And oh, and that was that was like the, I want to l- let me just pause. Like remind me to get back to this because yeah. I will go on a tangent. And forget about the forget about the plot. But like that was the other little stuff that made me like realize um like this shit this shit was like intentional and they knew about wrestling and all this other stuff was like the little shit when you were watching the match. So it's like the King and DDP are, are wrestling and they're doing little stuff where they're like, cause there's a thing if for wrestlers sometimes will like sometimes wrestlers will like really, really plan out the match. They'll plan out every yeah. spot that they want to go, but sometimes they'll have a few spots and they'll just, they'll, they'll, they'll figure it out in the ring. Yeah. So like they were doing, they were doing little things where while they were wrestling, the one guy would be like, uh, uh, okay, uh, clothesline me and then hit him with a clothesline. And they'd be like, all right, uh, suplex me. You know, it's like little yeah, things yeah. where it's like you tell the other wrestler what to do. So they were doing that. And then it gets to the one part where they're screwing over the King and they get like all these bad guys out. It's like fucking, uh, 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 uh Sid, uh, psycho S- Sid DDP fucking bam, bam, Bigelow. And they, uh, they they all all four of them get on the turnbuckle and fucking jump on him at the same time, and this my dude's my favorite line of the movie, where uh uh they, and this is another nod to where I'm like they get wrestling yeah because they they all jump on him and just fuck the king up and David Arquette the camera goes on David Arquette and he just goes this isn't even a pay per view <laughs> which yeah yeah. yeah. Which, if you guys know wrestling, like a lot of times they save the, they'll do a house shows a lot of times where basically means they don't televise them. And then they'll save all the big shit for the pay per view. So, yeah. like when he said that line, I'm like, that's because fu- that line's for the wrestling fans. Yeah. You know, I mean, and I, I, also you could probably do a quick A to B and figure out what he, <laughs> what he means. But it, it, I do think it's a good like nod to the wrestling fans of like, you know, thank you for watching, guys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're, yeah. So, uh, basically, they go uh find the king um and then be- get him to wrestle again they set up a whole thing to uh yeah get him back on uh d- the wcw or it was like monday night nitro or whatever yeah and uh yeah he regains his crown and it's a it's a it, uh, hilarity ensues during the whole time <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if hilarity ensues the whole time but hijinks definitely ensue oh oh hijinks no doubt hijinks absolutely yeah there's, there's a, uh it's just go ahead th- they did like they did like all the great little like paint by numbers of like a late 90s early 2000s comedy yeah like there's the one like do you remember um they do the scene my, one of my favorite parts was they did like they do the scene where they go through the drive through in the beginning and the guy's trying to like hit on the super hot girl yeah. but it's that thing where it's like but no the you know not as hot girl but still super cute but with the personality that's the one you should be with yeah, yeah, yeah. and they kind of like mention it david arquette says a little thing about like in that vein and he's just like i don't know and then they never reference it again <laughs> and then she like shows up she shows up to this random fucking like the king's going to do the goddamn paper like it's like a hell in the cell type pay-per-view yeah and like no, no at no point has the town or anything ever like been interjected into the story of like being behind him and then magically there's a whole band and like the whole town is ready to send him off to go to a, to go to a wrestling pay-per-view like yeah. it's they have like like they have a bunch of those every year uh, but um <laughs> also this one's for a million girl, dollars which why a million dollars why is that added in there who maybe this is why yeah, wcw fell add- apart yeah yeah exactly <laughs> he's just fucking giving a million dollars to a dude <laughs> fucking with you know for for c- no conceivable reason um yeah. it, it didn't the belt didn't seemed like it would have been prize that. enough yeah that was the funniest part where i was just like why that the, it did it didn't add to the plot it was never brought up like oh i need this money it was just like an extra thing to be like and a million dollars yeah. that's a lot of money <laughs> But no, uh, uh, so they're doing the send off thing and then randomly the girl shows up and it's like they realize like, oh, we love each other and they just bang it out on the tour bus. Well, he gives her a a Hard Rock Cafe t-shirt and she's like, oh, I love it. I have a gift for you and then takes them into the the trailer and they uh, they get together. 
It's very weird. Yeah. <laughs> the, this, it's a very equal exchange <laughs> of goods and services. But I was just like, what was the point? It, it was literally just to be like, well, we need to have like a fuck joke. It's like, there's no point of that at all to be in this fucking movie. Yeah, um, yeah I think they just wanted oh, to then, show uh, Scott Kahn's butt. That was their main goal. Yeah. Like, we got to get a like, way oh, to get him naked. Because that's another thing of the 90s. Yeah. Men's butts all over the place. If you don't have it's, a, a male butt the in the 90s movies, you're, what are you doing? You might as well. Why'd you even sh- why'd you even shoot that fucking movie? <laughs> There's no guy's butt in it. What the fuck are we watching this for? No, there was the whole there was the whole scene where they, he was like recruiting his team. Yeah. Of the, the the like firefighter and the fucking the chewer or whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> and then the uh the, the girl that was just hot. Yeah. Um and Pretty then they Kitty? go to the match. Is that her name? Yes, I don't know. I don't they know. go to the match and she did not. They did. They all did nothing. Yeah, they walked out and that was it. Did, did you ever notice that they yeah. walked out and did nothing? And the only time that oh, are you there? Thank you. You, I lost you for a second. And it's just like, uh, I said, um, yeah, they didn't do anything. And the only, the only thing that. Like he was the king was getting housed, and then the only thing that helped him was like Goldberg and like two other dudes showed yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, what was the point? It's like there was like, don't get me wrong, I was I was giving a lot of compliments to this movie up top. Yeah, but yeah. No, there's a lot it's of a sh- mess. there's a lot of shit. There's a lot of shit in this movie that's just like, why did that have to happen? Why did like why is any of this happening? <laughs> yeah. And so this is all pre internet, but I still feel like he would have had connections for guys who wrestled at some point but got kicked out that he could have recruited way easier than doing an open call in their small little town oh and also too if this was if this if this was based in any sense of reality <laughs> he was this was this was in the 2000s wcw was fucking huge so you're telling me this guy whose character has never lost he's one of wcw's top guys which by the way i have no idea why wcw would want to get rid of one of their top uh top guys that everyone loved but let's just say they did so they get rid of their top guys you're telling me there is no other like indie uh there's no other indie wrestling tour or wrestling promotion that he could get on it's like absolutely fucking not it's like the it's like the fact that it's like well if you're not on wcw it's like you're just gonna be a drunk who you're just gonna be a drunk who just wears drag in his trailer yeah and that was not referenced at all uh the the no no they did they because i think he was trying to it was a loose reference it was a very loose reference but i think he was trying to uh disguise himself from like bill collectors or something but it really at its essence it was that's a guy in a dress that's the other actually bringing up the whole dress thing that's the other thing that i just loved about this movie is it was just you know, I know you were pointing you were pointing out nuance and stuff earlier, and I like, and I was even pointing it out with like, you know, the little things of them calling the match in the ring and uh, all that little stuff. But this movie, it just brought me back to a time when like comedies did not have to have an ounce of subtlety to yeah. them, and this this movie had no subtlety to it whatsoever. Like one of the, like one of the jokes and I'll be honest, it got me just cause I like, I remembered it, yeah. but dude, like, or two of the jokes that got two of the jokes that were like my favorite at the time, like, like DDT, DDT or uh, DDP. Sorry. Um, <coughs> DDP gets like fucked up. And the dude who I kept forgetting his name, like goes up to him and I for- he like goes a diamond upside down is a pussy. And it's like, <laughs> that's the joke. Yeah. And then, um, what the fuck was the, Oh, and then, uh, when, uh, uh, David Arquette hooks up with Rose McGowan. Yeah. She like pulls her tits out and he just get, he just yells, he goes foreign objects and he punches Rose <laughs> McGowan in the face. Yeah. Which by the way, I don't know if you know this, I don't know if you noticed. I mean, Rose McGowan gets her shit rocked like three times in this movie. Like actually, in real life, she gets hurt, or just in oh the no movie? no no. Okay. I mean, like like in the movie, there's like two points where it's like the joke is she got like fucking rocked in the face. Yeah, she gets it's beat like, up a lot. Just, she gets hit with a, a ladder. She uh, wrestles David yeah. Arquette. David Arquette punches her in the face. <laughs> like. <laughs> It's just this movie's so fucking ridiculous. It's just insane. Oh, dude, and it had it had the great um, 
it just had that it just had that beautiful innocent yet creepy like pre me too comedy where the joke is just like oh we're just peeking in on the women changing yeah like that's the joke and you're just like jesus christ like this it was, it was weird it, in it retrospect did. it didn't seem strange at the time it seemed pretty normal like no well because there's this like there's almost like this bugs bunny like ain't i a stinker thing to it yeah. where it's like it, it they would they would do it in a way that didn't feel malicious but it is a thing of like I, I i don't know how to phrase it exactly but a lot it's like it becomes really apparent that like and I, i'm not I'm, on, I'm not on some fucking like we need to get more women in the i don't care i just want the people who are the best at writing shit but it is also a thing of like you get this like the the writing staff just reeks of or whoever was making the decisions to be like this is what's in the fucking movie it just reeks of this over the top alpha dog energy that's just like it, it doesn't age well you know what i yeah, mean yeah yeah no for sure yeah the the thing i found somewhat frustrating about this movie was it's very inconsistent with the reality of the movie like you look at the wrestling moves and they do they'll do wrestling moves that are you know set up and fake right like just general wrestling yeah but then all of a sudden those wrestling moves become effective in a real fight like when they're actually trying to hurt each other they're still doing wrestling moves as a way to hurt each other and it's like wait you can't you can't suplex somebody unless they help you out that's not possible you can't get someone to stand straight above your head and suplex them unless they're trying to help you and stuff like that yeah and then uh yeah it's just i don't know man it was it's interesting um they they're just kind of all over the place tonally well they because they kept they kept going with the jo- I know they kept going with the joke in the beginning where uh like they'll be like wrestling's fake and David Arquette keeps going Re- wrestling's not fake. So I think it was I think they were kind of trying to use that sort of theme yeah. and like blur blur the line cuz it, it was a thing where it's like they were even acknowledging that wrestling was fake but then also they kept doing shit in the match to um you know actually like hurt each other. Yeah. So it was like I think they kept doing this thing where they were like blurring the lines between like uh, what you would do in a real fight and like what would you do in a wrestling fight, and also we may just be completely overanalyzing it. Oh, you know? for sure, yeah. <laughs> just at <add> it. <laughs> but that's the funnest thing to fucking do sometimes is just overanalyze something that never had any, um, to like never had too much thought go into it in the first place. Yeah, yeah, you, they. They were just like, let's just do it. It'll, it'll be fun. It'll be funny. Mm-hmm. Let's just go. Yeah. I uh, they um. I think it actually would have been. A, I think it, the movie would have been a lot better had David Arquette played it more straight. Give him the same lines. Give him the same mentality, but not be so over the top. And I think his jokes would have landed much harder than they ended up doing. Where his he's like so convinced that wrestling's real and it's so important to him. If he played that more earnest instead of like crazy, some person who's somewhat mentally challenged, it would have been funner because <laughs> you're right now you're just laughing at him for being dumb, and it's like oh, this isn't this doesn't feel good to do. Yeah, yeah, it's like you're laughing at you're laughing at the guy who's like a little it's like am i laughing because this is funny or am i like laughing because he's a little bit slow and you're like i don't i don't it doesn't it like you said it doesn't feel as good to be like oh i'm laughing at him because he's a dummy yeah but now this movie i don't know that that would be that'd be an interesting direction to take it where he isn't like yeah because even um well no uh, uh uh you say like playing it more earnest he has the whole he actually has, he, they kind of do the bit that they did in fucking uh, mall rats where mall rats they do the uh, chocolate covered pretzel yeah and then in this one he like puts his finger up his butt to make the sl- and that's kind of the thing like in mall rats it's a it's almost a little bit funnier where he's like playing it real low key yeah but like and then in and then in fucking this movie you just see david arquette like this slushy smells like poop yeah and you're just like oh god yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It's, it's yeah. It'd be an intri- It'd be a different. It'd be, definitely be a different movie. But I also think at the same time that's like the whole vibe of this movie because it was, 
it was like so cartoony and stuff like like when he shows up to his house in the beginning and you got his mom dad and uh and a sister and they're all they're all cops and the second he walks in they all just point their guns at him yeah you know what i mean i think this movie i think this movie was intentionally supposed to be over, over the, the top, top yeah. and like over the top and very animated and shit yeah yeah i just I feel like there's a much better movie in the script than what they put on screen. And it, it's like, yeah, probably I, I, I would be really curious to see the an original writer's intention because there seems like there is uh, yeah, no. genuine care for wrestling somewhere in this movie, but there mm-hmm. doesn't seem to be genuine care for making the movie. Yeah. And this, this movie seems it seems like it started in a place that would be way more, a little more serious and yeah. a little more genuine and stuff. But then it's like, I feel like it also got, a, I, I feel like, like, this is just my guess. I have no fucking clue, but it, it, it almost, uh, like you were saying how there are the little, there are all the little nods and stuff to wrestling throughout the movie. But then, but then, you know, you see all the unnecessary shit where it's like, oh, here's this guy's butt and here's hot chicks for the sake of hot chicks. And, you know, let's just fucking spray them with shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. all that little stuff where where it was like it was them trying to. And I think I think it was kind of like a sign of the times, too, yeah. where I think I'm using that expression. Right. But it's like, you know, you can get away with you could do some like Kevin Smith shit now. And like you, you, you saw his movie Tusk. I didn't see that one. No. Yeah, well, like it's a horror movie, but it's like a very if you know the story behind it, it all came from them riffing on a podcast and then they asked their fans like, "Hey, do you want to make a movie? Should we make a movie about this shit?" And everyone said yes, so he made a movie and like made it into a horror movie. And it's like it's for a very specific type of person. Yeah. But it's like you couldn't I don't I don't think you could I don't think Kevin Smith could find someone to finance and then like make the money back on that movie in 2000 yeah you know what i mean so mm-hmm. you know it, it, that that was like that i think you like it like i feel like if they made ready if like a, a an indie company or whatever made ready to rumble now i think it would be so much better oh yeah. you know if you just if, mm-hmm. if, it, if it was that if it was if you took like the original script and just let the writers or just do what the writers intended and not like shoehorn all this unnecessary extra shit. I think there was strong potential for it to definitely be like a good, like not funny because it's stupid, funny because it's funny. Yeah. And lower the stakes too. Like make it something like, uh, was it Ring of Honor? The more indie wrestling. Yeah. And then, yeah. 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 Or and, a- anything. Yeah. yeah. And don't make it a uh, million dollar prize. Like, just lower For no everything fucking reason because then it would make way more sense why these guys who are obsessed with this thing would have access yeah. to the most famous person in it and be able to help them get back on top like the story isn't terrible like the idea of no. it, the the premise of it isn't bad it's just they're like we're well, gonna be straightforward be crazy yeah. yeah it's a pretty straightforward plot it's mm-hmm. guys on top now he's not on top let's get him back on top yeah you know what I mean? It, it's a pretty j- straightforward story. And then throughout the telling of that story, you know, th- there's a bunch of little like, you know, you, you could have done that movie in such a different way where you have these guys who are like, uh, you know, certifiable, you know, for lack of a better term, they're losers. Yeah. And now they're figuring out their way to become great. You know, yeah. there, there's a potent like you could you could give it the fucking uh, uh I don't know. Give it, give it some like indie movie treatment. Make it like a fucking Juno or some shit like that, or mm. even like, like was, was Super Bad like an indie movie when it came out? I can't remember. Super Bad was Judd Apatow, right? So it's not quite an in indie. It's just not mainstream. And that, but yeah, and that that was after. Oh yeah, that was a lot after. Um, forty. So Judd Apatow was already, but it the the whole thing was it was whatever but um like the vibe of super bad yeah, where it was yeah. kind of like it had it had like this more indie less sort of mainstream studio feel to it but you know what i'm saying just yeah. like if you almost do it in that do it in a way where it is funny but it still has some heart you know what i mean like if yeah. you, throughout this movie dude, that's if what someone like stab that's what this movie if someone like have stab, it, yeah it, yeah dude it's like i I'm enjoying it for nostalgic reasons because I loved this shit when I was 10. But if like there was a scene at the end where like 
I don't know, someone stabbed David Arquette in the heart and he died. <laughs> I like it's not like I would feel bad for I, I I I wouldn't be like, yes, good, that's what you should do to him. Yeah. I just wouldn't care. You know what I mean? There's yeah. nothing there's nothing to get emotionally invested into any of these characters. Yo, you you're, you got me thinking on a whole different plane right now. <laughs> I was listening to uh, uh, so, someone's theory about how it should have ended, which I thought was pretty genius. And he was how saying it should have been what? How it should have ended. Oh, 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 and, oh, oh. And uh, he was saying that it should have ended with the two guys, David Arquette and Scott Can, finding out that the king and joe pantaleano were working together as a work the entire time like the whole setup everything was just a big ruse to get more people in into yeah. watching wcw and then it could just shatter their whole reality and they'd be like somewhat lost at the end of the movie and then it would all the craziness would make way more sense but they would be the only ones who thought it was real the entire time when no one else did. And I thought it was like, oh, that's yeah. a pretty good idea. That's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. You ha- you definitely have to play it less like like wacky and shit. You yeah. know? Mm-hmm. I, I just I wanna I, I just wanna I just wanna fucking give the script to Kevin Smith and just find funding for it or something. <laughs> or so I don't know. Yeah. No, there's there's probably sure. a bunch of other good directors. That's just the first one to come. Yeah, dude, it's just this yeah, you got me thinking now. Like this movie could have been so good, yeah, so good if it was just if it was tweaked in certain ways. Mm-hmm. You know, not have that like highfalutin fucking over the top Mountain Dew energy that fucking <laughs> all the late nineties, early two thousands yeah. movies had. Give it the more laid back, like, uh, you know, make it a little more quirky or whatever. Yeah. Make it make it more uh, give more shit in there to the wrestling fans. It would have been such a good fucking movie. Yeah, and what. They had access to so many guys too, and they hardly yeah. used them at all, which was shocking. There's also John Cena is in this. He's like in the background of the workout scene with when Goldberg is bench pressing. You can see him walk by. Are with you his, serious? Yeah, you can see him walk by with his uh, blonde flat top when he was. No fucking way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, dude. When Cena first debuted, he looked so goddamn funny. Yeah. He, what was his name? Do you he remember? The, no, I think he was always John Cena. In thought, WWE, he was. Okay. What? I, I thought he was like a robotic name. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. I don't know. No, I th- I I might be wrong. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty. Because he was in a bu- he was in shit before WWE, so I I don't know really about his uh, pre WWE character, but um, like he started out as just this like you know just this super athlete then he went to the and then he went to you know all american hustle respect guy he is now yeah but uh yeah sorry i was trying to look up john cena's stuff but i don't see it um no i heard you typing i was like I was hoping you were looking it up <laughs> trying to see I'm really I'm really curious actually cuz I I um I I I haven't I haven't looked up much of his pre WWE shit. That'd be like really fun to check out. Yeah, the prototype in uh Ultimate uh, Pro Wrestling UPW from Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I I seen a clip yeah. he he was friends with this guy Mark Bell who's a powerlifter. And uh, uh, okay. they always play that clip. That's where I had seen him before. Oh, nice! Yeah, I like John Cena. Uh, he he, he's, I, he seems no, I, like I, I a really genuinely good guy. Like he has the most he, uh, yeah yeah uh, make a wishes, wishes right. It's like over yeah. five hundred visits. Which, if you're in his position, a hundred percent, that's what you should be doing. Like, not Dude, only he, is I, it I, I remember not only is it cool to do for the kids, but how great would you feel? to make someone a little kid who's sick and dying feel better just by showing up like yo but i heard i heard um i heard those fuck people up sometimes if you if you do too many yeah because it start it's like and also too if you get too close with the kids because you know uh sometimes they you know sad sadly but true they don't make it and sometimes it just fucks people up yeah, I just I needed you were making it too happy. I needed to go to the uh, sad <laughs> angle again, like I did with Benoit. Earlier. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck it? What what am I doing? Uh, 
I'm just like, I'm just like, you're making it real happy over there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking bring in the dark reality of life anyway. <laughs> um, but no, John me. Cena's the fuck. John Cena's the fucking man. Uh, he like, like with those Make a Wishes. I for, the one I looked up the stats for the one year that he had like the most Make a Wishes in one year, and it like the numbers averaged out to literally like at least two a week at least yeah yeah i believe it because it was like it it, it was over a hundred it was over a hundred so you what, just got to do uh what was it 52 weeks in a year you got it to do two a week that's 104 a year and i think he did more than that so dude's doing at minimum two make a wishes a week so yeah. pro- sometimes probably three four five that's fucking insane yeah. and also props to john cena that over a hundred like a hundred to two hundred kids every year uh, a dying kid the like the, he he gets the power of make a wish and he wants to meet john cena like props to john cena for being all these kids fucking heroes yeah. that's awesome yeah yeah, because they're not like choosing cool. choosing him because he does it. They're choosing him because he's one of their favorite people. Like, yeah, yeah. Those- I'm sure. I'm sure there's like stipulations where it's like, you know, oh, you need your Make a Wish this time of year. Who here's who we have available? But still, these kids are still picking John Cena every fucking time. Yeah, and it's uh, dude, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, he's a. He seems like a really good guy. Like he seems like the Rock is rock's persona in actual real life like i don't think the rock is as good of a guy as he seems like he's like i don't think he's a bad guy but he comes off as like a great person but i think john cena is legitimately off as a guy who really uh plays it up for social media i think i i think the rock's probably a cool dude yeah but it's clear like if you watch his social and literally just like like i remember his daughter was born and the first thing he puts up is this like fucking like three paragraph instagram post which whoever posts like a long set like i did it once on instagram when a friend of my di- when a friend of mine died yeah where you do like a long paragraph but like the people who do that shit regularly like i don't know if you've ever posted on instagram but you do if you do more than like five sentences, it's fucking annoying because it gets small and you got to like go back up and all this little <laughs> shit. Like it's, you know, it's like if you're a psychopath if you do that, like on the reg. And like his daughter had just been born and he's doing this whole like, I'm such a great guy where he's like, I'm sitting here. This is a picture of me whispering in her ear, telling her to be a strong woman because women are the best. And I'm like, uh, you know, I don't, I'm, obviously it's good to be a strong woman, but I'm more critiquing the rock of just being like, taking oh, advantage. Being, I, this I- oh, lost you for a second. You there from a guy. I'm coming at this from a guy to a guy standpoint where it's like, you're doing this on purpose, bro. Yeah. I know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. No, it, uh, it feels very manipulative, that type of stuff. You know, like it's hard, it's hard to be genuine and be on social media too. Because everything yeah. is calculated. Like, it's one thing to feel that way and actually, like, whisper into your daughter's ear, like, you're going to be a strong woman. You're going to be great. You're going to be smart. You're going to do this. But then when you're like, these are all the things that I said to her, it's like, okay, well, it, it really deflates the importance of that, that yeah. moment. Because now you're just using it to get internet points. Yeah, yeah. That's how I feel about because I'll I'll post like I'll post stuff a lot about my girl, my wife, and um I I, I got married like two weeks ago. I'm still not in the fucking uh, <laughs> yeah. the routine of saying wife. That takes a while because I gotta to. I gotta stop I gotta stop I, I would say chick and girl a lot. I gotta mm. I gotta go I gotta fucking remember she is my wife. Um, I left my fucking ring in my car because I fucking take it off to go to work because I haven't gotten one of those silicone rings yet. So that's why I'm a terrible husband right now with no ring on. Um, but uh, wait, what the fuck was I talking about? I don't know. You're cheating oh, on your being, wife at work. Oh, I think oh, you said. Oh. What? You were talking about cheating on your wife at work? Yeah. No, at my, on my lunch break. So I technically wasn't at work. Oh, okay. Um, gotcha. But in all honest, I can I can cheat with it on. I mean, I'm gonna cheat. So why? <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> um, 
No, no, I uh, you slipped that in there. Good, that was really funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that almost got past me. I good thing I corrected that and uh, identified that as a joke, or else it would have just been I would have just steamrolled past that. And like, oh, okay, <laughs> so Andy just cheats and he's super casual about it. Um, Only two weeks no, no, in, no, like, you're already looking for something on the side. <laughs> no, so like, no, like I'll post like lovey dovey shit, but it's, I just don't go over the top because I'm like. I don't need to like what it's like, what are you doing it for? I'm not, no. do I, I'm not trying to impress you people. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just like, I re I really only do it because I really only do it sometimes. Cause like she, she likes it because mm -hmm. she'll always be like, you haven't posted pictures of us together in a while. So yeah. I like, I, I'll do it. Cause I know she loves it. And it's like, I, you know, I don't give off. I don't give a shit. I'd rather yeah. do some, dumb goofy shit if it makes her happy but it's like i'm not gonna sit there and on fuck it's like why why because people people don't uh, uh people fucking have this disconnect where it's just like facebook and twitter and instagram are just extensions of ourselves it's yeah. like no they're fucking not they're websites <laughs> they're websites yeah. so just because you just because you did a thing doesn't mean you have to now like share it with the fucking world and I, yeah. and that's and i know people if they fucking pay attention to my shit they're like oh well we see you fucking updating your Instagram instagram story every fucking day and it's like no i update it with goofy dumb shit that yeah. i find funny you know what i mean mm -hmm. or, or or things like that but it's i don't treat it like just I, 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 there's a lot of people where it's like oh and nice things happening i gotta post this on facebook and it's like no i'll post I'll, i post if it's like if i think it's entertaining and honestly i use a lot of my social media in a more I mean, I'm not good at it, but I have a more of a like a business mindset. So I'm yeah. always thinking like, how will this expand my brand? And not so much as, oh, I got to update the world on my life. Yeah. Which once again is uh, is great coming from a man who has a podcast where he talks about what he did every weekend, every week. But um, I, I hope I don't sound like a piece of shit hypocrite. But whatever. Uh <laughs> well, I think it's I think it's different, right? Like. I think podcasting uh, is somewhat of a creative outlet. Like it gives you a chance to one, just get used to talking. You get better at it. Yeah. And, you know, especially if you're pursuing comedy, talking is really important and being able to express thoughts and, you know, craft them and work them out. That's something that podcasting does. Oh when, yeah. When you're posting stuff on Facebook and Instagram, it's more of look at me versus yeah. trying to yeah. be active in doing something. I, that's my opinion i mean i do podcasts too so maybe my i'm a little biased yeah. on that but i don't know i well no the the social media shit is definitely more f like you just said it's more for a hey look at me look at me yeah but like like i do the podcast because i love to do it you yeah. know what i mean mm -hmm. like I do this Twitch shit. Well, it's, it's, it's like at first I started doing Twitch as a way to like expand my podcast, but now I'm at a point where I got people like you and um, shouts out to like plague and fucking, even though he's a psychopath, jalapeno tackle box and <laughs> all these fucking dude, when you were fucking making fun of him, by the way of uh, what were you calling him? Cheeto, Cheeto fingers. fingers. I was yeah. dying. <laughs> <laughs> um no but uh you know i i now i have people who show up to my twitch stream regularly and but before it was a whole thing to spread my brand and now i'm like oh this is fucking fun yeah yeah that's you, what you that's know, my I, favorite I, part of all this is just talking to yeah people. just getting a topic yeah. and just you know going through it and twitch is actually the best platform for that like youtube is so toxic yeah I get yelled at constantly oh, if I make a small mistake. People get really upset with me. Someone <laughs> someone told me the other day, they said, because I said, uh, Crazy Rich Asians doesn't look like a good movie. It doesn't look fun. And it seems like it's going to be oh, very cliche. Crazy Rich Asians? Yeah. And they told me, it's no. not cliche. It's very authentic to Asian culture. You need to educate yourself about Asian culture. You don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, man, I've lived in Asia for eight years. What are you like? How are you going to tell me I need to educate <laughs> oh, yeah. myself on Asian culture? Like <laughs> you live in Asia, <laughs> and it's just like because you're are, wait you're um you're you're a uh, uh, Spanish, right? Uh, I'm American, but Mexican is the majority of my blood. Yeah, but like so 25%. but no, it's like so you but you live in Asia, so you're just yeah. like no. It uh, why did I have to point that out? I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the fucking point of that. I I had a point before. Yeah. And 
Yeah. That's um, all right. Just keep talking. It'll come back. Yeah. Whatever. I don't know. Something um, racist, I believe. Something. I mean, I now that I know you're Mexican, I I feel different. You can't um, tell. I, no, okay. I'm one of those. You, I'm like one of those uh, secret Mexicans. No one knows. You talk real. You talk real good. Kid. Oh, thank uh, you. <laughs> um, nah. I love fucking. Yeah, I don't. I don't know where I was going with any of that. But no, it needs a thing of just like, oh, you think I need to? Because no, oh, that's. I think that's what it was. Where people like look, people could probably look at you and um, like you look, you know, you you look a little Spanish or you look a little white or whatever. But then they'll be like, oh, so you don't? And it's it's kind of the irony where it's like these people are trying to fight racism or whatever, yeah. and they're actually being like racist, where it's just like, or 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 they're just being narrow minded. Yeah, and you're just like. Yeah, no, I don't need to be Asian to know Asian culture. Yeah. You know how I know Asian culture? I live in fucking Asia. <laughs> so it's like, you're dumb. Like, yeah. you're, you're you're just a fucking idiot. Yeah. Like, it's just so funny. Yeah, it was just like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, man, you don't know anything about me, and yet you're telling me what I need to educate myself on based off of yeah. your own. Yeah. He said Asians are more sophisticated than Westerners. And I was like, man, you're just racist. There's this weird romantic That's just- romanticization of different cultures of being like really great. I've lived in a, quite a few different cultures. They're not all great. Like there's bad things about every single culture. There's negative effects of yeah. everything. You go to a place for a every- week and you're like, wow, this is amazing. I wish everything was like this. You stay there for eight years and you're like, oh no, there's a lot of issues that you don't see that first week that you're here. There's a lot of deep seated things, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, like yeah. just like living in America. Well, it's, it, yeah, exactly. Well, it's Ari Shafir, you know, comedian Ari Shafir. Mm-hmm. He makes a great uh, point. He goes, every single group has their garbage people. Yeah. No matter. And it's like every single group has shitty. For sure. I lost you again. You can oh, be you, uh, uh, you can be a fucking rah rah proud boy, and you're like Western civilization is the best, and there's a bunch of great things about Western civilization, but Western civilization also has a lot of bullshit to it. Oh and yeah. Same goes with every single culture. So did, yeah, no, it's just so fun. I love I like you were saying about that. We were like, it's just, it's like the irony that comes in with that type of racism, where you just are gonna. I don't know. Skype. There aren't a lot of sophisticated. What? There you go. You, I dropped. You dropped out for a second, but you're back. Oh yeah, yeah. No, and this isn't me being like, oh, there's no sophisticated. No, there's probably there's a bunch of sophisticated. But just to go, uh, Asians are more sophisticated than this group, and it's just like you're trying to be a good person, but you don't even realize you're being racist because you're just like, oh, so it's just like, uh, it's just like, uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's so funny, man. It's so funny with all that shit. Yeah. I was uh, going back to the social media stuff. I was going to bring up the point. I, so I've been a missionary here and I know a lot of other missionaries and NGO yeah. workers and stuff like that. And uh, their posts are the worst. They always on, post. On social? Yeah. Like they post things that are so manipulative and so like control, like trying to trick people into giving them money and stuff like that. They'll be like, oh, it just. Just imagine if you gave up a cup of coffee every day this month, how much you could do with that if you gave it to me. And I'm just like, guys, come on. You're not really doing that Wait, much. Wait, they, they literally... Oh. oh. I can have it? Is that literally what they mean? What's that? Say it again. When when they're asking for money, are they going to be like, give me the money and I'll give it to a charity? Or are they literally saying, give me the money so I can have it? So that they can continue working here. Oh, okay. so it'll fund their whatever work they're doing or, you know, help pay their rent or whatever. But it's it's they're just trying to guilt people into giving opposed to yeah. allowing people to want to give, you know, that's like when I try to get people to come out to my shows, I'll just be like, you should come. And then they'll be like, eh. you know, they do yeah. that thing where they don't want to be mean, but they also want to make an excuse. And then once I get, I don't push the issue. Cause I'm like, I don't want to guilt you into this show. You're not going to have fun yeah. if you don't want to come to this show. It's like with any of that shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's why like, um, like, I don't know when I was first doing Twitch, I had like the follower bar mm-hmm. and it just felt like, I don't know. It didn't, it didn't, or I would have like a donation bar 
and I was being tongue in cheek about it. I like I titled it like "Give Me Your Money" because yeah. it's like I have a day job. I don't Twitch isn't my own thi- only thing. So it's like really me asking for this money is literally just being like "Give Me Your Money." But at the same time, I'm trying to like build up a following and get donations, so this yeah. can be my only thing. So it's like I do want to create a, a I create an environment of like yeah, you should give me money often. But it just <laughs> it felt weird to have that like bar in front of it to like sort of be. I, I, I don't know. I just like to have that energy and it makes me work harder. You know what I mean? Yeah. It makes me work harder to be, be better and more entertaining. If I'm not constantly being like, I'm not constantly focusing on like trying to get money out of people. If I'm just like being dope and being good at shit and people go, I like this guy. I'm going to give him my fucking money. I would rather that nine, like 10 times out of 10 every single fucking time. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Guilting people into doing anything for you is never effective long-term. I never feel good about that ever. No. Yeah. But I'm not quite sure how we got here from ready to rumble, but it was a good journey, Andy. Say that again. I said I'm not quite sure how we got to guilting people into giving us money from Ready to Rumble. I don't remember the I mean, steps ob- we took. Isn't it obvious that that's what they um, did? Oh, that was the last thing. Uh, David Arquette <laughs> won the WCW Championship in real life. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, no, I remember seeing that. I didn't like watch it in real. I didn't watch it when it was happening, but I remember like wwe's got like a million uh like documentary or yeah. you know craziest thing that happened list and stuff and i remember seeing that and i'm like that's fucking great that's <laughs> so funny like fucking uh like john stewart i think was in the ring one time yeah yeah, yeah. which i didn't realize john stewart's a big wrestling fan is he they were uh they posted they posted him on the uh, WWE Instagram during SummerSlam, and I think they mentioned the fact, or I, I read it somewhere, or something where it was like he goes to a lot of the pay per views. Mm. I think him and his kid are just really big wrestling fans. Yeah. Oh, that was another thing. My the problem with wrestling today is high def cameras. Okay. H- okay. HD cameras. It looks too clean. It looks like a Disney Channel show. It needs to go back to like 360p where it's all grainy and you can't really see what's going on and it just feels dirtier. All this really clean, really bright wrestling I think is worse than it used to be. Okay. I, 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 I kind of get what you're saying. It, there, there's a definite... Um, there's a definite like different feel. Like I remember I was watching matches from like uh once I, I feel like you can play a drinking game every time I say late nineties, early two thousands. But no, I was watching some like fucking uh 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 it was like I I I don't know, it was like the rock versus uh Hulk Hogan. It was one of those, like rock uh rock, rock stone cold, rock Hulk Hogan, whatever yeah. it was. And there was just there was something about the cameras like there wasn't as much like depth of field Mm -hmm. they lit the audience differently and there was something like they they um they pumped in more crowd audio and stuff because this is actually a thing i noticed that they do on wrestling now is the matches because it's it's one of the problems with the fact that they have an older audience a lot of times yeah but they're also trying to be more pg about it Mm -hmm. so chance will start where they'll be like they'll be like so and so's gonna kill you or they'll start the holy shit or they'll start the like you fucked up or or asshole or like the boo Roman Reigns because that's what every fucking man child thinks is the f- most hilarious thing in the world. Yeah, I'm not like a complete. But by the way, anyone listening, I'm not a complete Roman Reigns mark. But the whole fucking like booing him shit's getting exhausting. Anyway, um, so it's like they gotta control the they'll they'll turn the like if it helps out the if it helps out their storyline they'll yeah. turn the the audience volume up. But if it's like if it's some shit where the crowd's like chanting, like you fucked up or whatever, they turn it down. Yeah. And it's this weird thing where it's like wrestling is so, uh, wrestling is really enhanced from the crowd reaction. Oh yeah. For and sure. 
if you have if if the crowd if the volume of the crowd is really low for the show it just sounds like no one's enjoying it and it, it takes away something from the match so it is, yeah it is this weird thing where it is like it'll be like ultra high def, but it'll be like a quiet wrestling match. And yeah. I can see how, like if, when that happens, it'll take, it'll take you out. But, um, yeah, no, they, there are some times where I, I, I would love it if they don't do it a shitload, but I would love it if they just kept it a little simple and just didn't constantly like, they're trying to always get the new crazy angles. And I'm like, dude, no. that fucking steady cam on the side of the ring is good like yeah. you don't need to go you don't need to overdo it well there's also something but they're trying mentally impressive when it's one locked off shot right we've kind of been conditioned yeah. to where when there's a lot of cuts like you're watching a movie and there's a lot of cuts it's like oh this is just this is produced this isn't you know real this is just kind of something that they planned but you have a camera yeah, yeah. that's not not like a security camera or anything like that, but like a, a decent camera, but locked off for a long shot and you get to watch what's happening. It's more like being there and actually experiencing it, which feels a lot yeah. more authentic. Well, and also too, when they have so many fucking angles and they're trying to get the best shot, but it's like live action and you mm -hmm. can't plan it out and you can't do, you can't do new takes. I've been watching it where like you hear the commentators telling you some crazy shit happens, but they like, they don't switch the cameras quick enough. So you like, you miss the, the mm. big, whatever the big hit was or whatever that, it, it, that that's another thing that'll happen from time to time. That's just kind of irritating, but yeah, I, 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 but in the same breath, I don't think it's, um, I don't know. I, I honestly would have to think about that more like, cause I definitely have noticed there's big difference in the filming style from now, as opposed to like early two thousands or whatever. Well, everything is time, in focus now. The whole, there's yeah. no, like, it's visually so uninteresting to look at because you can just see everything really sharp. And it's just yeah kind of a boring camera angle. And it's also, too, a lot of the stuff is just, um, yeah, it, it's all very clean, too. Mm -hmm. Like, I noticed that, I know that they'll do, the, you watch older wrestling events where they just keep the whole crowd lit mm -hmm. and it's like all the shit's going on. You see like, you see the actual like crowd reactions. I don't know. I think it's the fact that they're not, it's like they're out of the attitude era. They're in this PG era um, and they need to like control it more. Yeah. And it's just, it's taking away like the little nuances of the experience. Yeah. Well, overall, yeah. What do you give Ready to Rumble? What's your what's your rating? Out of ten? That? Yeah. Um I don't know. Cause it's not um it's enjoyable, but it's not like I think it's only I can't enjoyable give it too high of a rating because the enjoyment I got what? I think it's only enjoyable if you've seen it as a kid. Good way to cut out. Uh, here, say it again. I think it's only enjoyable if you had seen it when you were a kid already. Like if you watch it for the first time now, oh, if as you an saw adult, it as a kid. Yeah, if you watch it as an adult yeah, now, it's hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, this if this was the first, if this was the first time I ever watched it, I would be like, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah, but the fact that. No, like when they like I was saying before, when he's like foreign objects or all those like all the dumb little parts I remember, I was like I popped hard for those. Yeah. So I don't want to give it. I I want to keep nostalgia in play, and I don't mm. want to give it too much of a score because I did honestly. I had a lot of fun watching it. Um, but yeah, I would probably give as a whole. I don't know, like a five or a six. Oh, yeah. Cause it's not the worst. It's not the worst movie in the world. Mm. It's definitely, there's some enjoyment from it. You can have fun cause it is stupid, but there is like a lot like story wise. There's a lot of like, we were talking about like the $1 million and the chick fucking the dude for no, like yeah. it, it, there's so much shit that just doesn't add to the story. But yeah, I'd probably give it like, like a five and a half or like a soft six. Yeah. Yeah, I, w I was going to probably go about four, and that's mostly because it okay. was cool to see all the old school wrestlers again. Like that was interesting. Oh, uh, okay. To see them all back, and I mean, because that's when I, you know, I grew up watching a lot of those guys, and so seeing them was kind of the nostalgia <laughs> thing for me more than the movie itself was just seeing the wrestlers. 
But uh, it's if you've seen it, it's it's not it's not the worst watch. It's just not funny to me. Like there's not. I don't think I laughed one time. I'm trying no. to remember. Yeah, I, I I totally get that. But there was st- I don't know, man. There was just this like the one thing that's keeping me uh keeping it at a you know i'll say a five Uh, because you know what after you were kind of explaining it i'm like six is way too generous you know what i mean yeah yeah because i'm like because i'm uh, i'm almost thinking about like if you were comparing it to like rating you know women's looks which i would never do uh in (laughs) this me too time i would know i'm just talking about a i'm talking about a friend that did it's Um, like a a solid danny uh, devito yeah (laughs) it's a good old d it's a good old danny devito but no it's like it's one of the if you were comparing it to like rating a chick or whatever it'd be like you know she's definitely not the hottest chick in the bar but also you know she's not she's not a complete mess you know it's like right in the middle it's a it's a good time but it's not the best thing in the world yeah it'd be like if (laughs) uh what's his name what's the king's name oliver platt if Oliver Oliver Platt was I in a wig so, yeah. at the bar, that's <laughs> sure. what this movie is. But like a real, and he got like you know he had a pretty convincing get up on. Yeah, well, I like for a trailer trash, moo moo wear. Yeah, movie, you know, the, like he pulled the sort that of off. Thing, yeah, like the sort of thing where it's like if you were sober, you'd notice it right out of the gate. But like if you were pretty drunk, he'd, he'd be able to trick you <laughs> semi easily. That's kind of that's actually a perfect analogy to this movie. Yeah. Well, Andy, and I, I would also have a great, I would also have a great time watching this if I was hammered. To keep going with the analogy, uh, <laughs> that generally helps. It seems like with movies that are so over the top, substances I think yeah. are a big factor of why people love movies like this. That's my general rule for just going to like concerts in general. Cause my, my, uh, my wife likes to, she likes to go to concerts a lot and she'll like, you know, if she's going, it's, I'm not, obviously she's not going by herself. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'll come with her, but a lot of times it's bands I don't like and she'll get like, Oh, I feel bad. You don't know this band. I'll be like, sweetie, do they have a bar? Well, I'm going to be in about four or five drinks. I'm going to be their biggest fan. Don't you worry, <laughs> sweetie. <laughs> Well, Andy, how can people find you again? What's the best way to get a hold of you? If you just complimented me, it cut out. No, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> Don't worry. It wasn't a compliment. How can people okay. find you? I was going to say, I want to hear my compliment. <laughs> I, okay, your insult cut out too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how, how can people find you? Andy's got jokes on Twitch, oh, Instagram. Yeah, and... Andy got jokes on Twitch, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, the Dope Show podcast on Facebook. Search if you want to listen to the pod. If you want to have the podcast feed with you, which I do, the I do the Dope Show, and then I always try to like throw in bonus episodes and stuff uh, as much as I can. So just search the Dope Show official on iTunes. Um, and yeah, I have a YouTube youtube channel which you can search the dope show podcast but i'm not really updating that a lot now not saying i never will in the future but if you want to get in on that you can and that's uh it's pretty much it i think cool man well thanks for doing this it's fun talking about ready to rumble oh. did i get another compliment it cut out no I'm sorry. I, I, <laughs> I i don't don't worry i won't give you any compliments none are coming your way andy man. hello uh <laughs> <laughs> when you when you came back when it came back in yeah uh it just was you saying i'm coming your way and i'm like oh my <laughs> <laughs> all right i feel like your internet connection is telling us to wrap yeah up. i think so i think it's dying <laughs> or but- man thank you so thank you so much for uh having me on this was a blast uh i love uh, i love i love talking about movies when i have the time i actually want to start my own movie podcast because i just fucking love discussing movies so when you invited me on i was very very happy yeah this was very fun thanks a good so time much, sir. thanks uh thanks again for coming on fuck you taylor and i will be yeah, back dude anytime in a couple of days with uh i don't know what's coming up i i always do this i always set myself up to have something to say that i should have information for i never have it on hand and just i just say, sound dumb just say you got just say you got big stuff to come. Big we'll stuff discuss, coming. We'll discuss it on next episode. Big stuff coming. Big stuff coming. I seen that. Uh, the dope show. We're coming to a theater near you. 